Hi guys, it's uh, Dave here from Lab Admin and uh, Lab Gymnastics. Uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, inaugural webinar series called Stretch. Uh, just wanted to give you a, a little bit of background if I can. So uh, some of you will know me from Lab Admin. So we've uh, uh, been helping hundreds of gymnastics clubs over the years with their administration. And um, we've, uh, we've come up with Love Gymnastics. It was a brand that we actually wasn't going to really launch until later in the year um, when we're rolling out a new version of our software. But we felt that uh, there's lots going on in the world. Um, uh, and it was a real opportunity to talk directly to gymnastics clubs that maybe we, we don't have the, the right platform with the Lab Admin. Lab, uh, Lab Admin serves many different sectors from gymnastics clubs to football clubs to rugby clubs to membership organizations to class and course providers. So we wanted to create a platform where we could just talk gymnastics. So uh, hence uh, the Love Gymnastics um, brand is, is, uh, is now out there. Uh, and as part of that, we wanted to talk about the, the topical issues of the day. And uh, there's nothing more topical at the moment than COVID-19 and uh, the hope that soon we're going to come out of, of lockdown. So um, the first of this uh, two-part webinar series um, is back to business. It's, okay, what's, um, what can we expect or what, what are the types of things that we should be looking to do now and in the future when we we get back in the gym. Uh, and I'd like to, to introduce you to a, a colleague of mine, um, uh, Kim Ransom. So Kim is a, uh, has been a gymnastics club owner. She's owned two clubs. She's been a gymnast. She's been a coach. Uh, and um, she's uh, now a gymnastics club strategist. So I'm just going to hand over the controls to Kim. Kim's going to be running this session for us. She speaks gymnastics. I speak more uh, business and admin and process. So well, she's much in a, she's in a much better position to, to uh, talk about this subject than I. So um, Kim, I'm just going to make you the host. And uh, you All should right. be can able you... to hear Kim come in now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I think Got there's me. nods there. Thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay. Good. All Kim. right. Kim, have you shared your screen? I will do that. Let's see. This will, yes. Can we share screen? We're back on the purple screen, right? Got the purple screen? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, did you, Dave, did you want to touch on um, week two of this before I? Okay. Pop up? Yeah, let's do that. If you just skip through a couple of uh, slides. Okay. So, uh, part two of this series is going to be on HR and staffing. So there's um, a number of considerations that we've got to think about when we're coming back to business. Uh, so we're going to be running a webinar on that with a, a lady called Sharon Bridgman Goff. Uh, she has 30 years experience in HR. She's a non-exec um, director at British Cycling. She helps us as a business on our people strategy. Um, so we're going to be running that next Thursday at four o'clock. I'm going to post the link for that in the chat box. Um, so you would be able to, uh, be able to register for that. Um, uh, when you go to that registration page, you'll see some of the questions that we're going to be covering there. So some real interesting and, and relevant um, topics there. Uh, uh, okay, back to you, Kim. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dave. All right, there we have Dave's lovely face. That was and... pre-corona. Pre <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my name is Kim Ransom and I live in Pennsylvania. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A uh, gym strategist is just a very fancy name for business coach. So my specialty is working with gymnastics gyms. So since I have grown up in the sport, I was an athlete. I was a coach. I'm still a coach. I've owned two gyms. Uh, the next logical progression for me, because I really love the back end part of owning a gymnastics gym, was to go help other people make their gyms better. So that's what I spend my time doing right now. Uh, the people that I work with tend to be small gym owners, so they might be kind of the, the mom and pop gyms or maybe legacy gyms that have been around for a really long time but need help kind of updating their systems and figuring out why they're having certain hurdles. So I kind of help people get untangled, if you will. I really like that part of owning a gym. So 
Uh, there's a picture of, of me and what I like to look like every day. I, I do not anymore, COVID, you know, um, and then me as a coach. So luckily I still get to coach gymnastics, a little bit of cheer, don't shoot me, and Olympic weightlifting, I also love. So today we are here to get a little perspective. So here in the US, we have a little uh, maybe different situation because uh, we're bigger, obviously. We have more states and regions and departments and kind of local people that tell us what to do, as well as having to balance that with the CDC, um, you know, and the powers that be. So I would love to say that there has been a very uniform system here, but the reality of what's happening is that we've been shut down a little longer than the UK. and because of that, we've already seen gyms reopening. So my job allows me to have sort of a 30,000 foot view of what gyms are doing out there. So I get to talk to a lot of people every day. Some have gone about this uh, shutdown and reopening a little bit more strategically. Some people have panicked. Some people haven't even made a plan yet. So the data that I'm going to give you today is sort of a conglomerate of um, conversations I've had, uh, a parent survey that I've done myself, um, and just a, a little bit of strategy as I see it. So yes, there are variables that you don't have. You don't know what your ratios are going to be when you're allowed to reopen. You don't know what square footage you're going to be allowed to work with when you reopen. We know that, but there are a lot of things that you can do to be able to plug and play when you get that information as it comes. So. Uh, oh, and just a little housekeeping before we, we get started. So we've got you all muted right now. If you have questions or comments, and I'm sure you will as I go, please feel free to pop those in the chat box. We do have team members from Love Gymnastics here that can give you quick answers for things like links or quick little questions that you have. Um, but I'm gonna take some time at the end to scroll through the questions and answer them. And then also, this is a town hall style meeting. So at the end, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna give it to you and have some conversations. So with that being said, discussion topics for the day. This is what we're gonna tackle. So we're gonna talk about uh, ways that we can go about having sort of a spectrum approach to rephasing. So if you're a visual learner like I am, the way that I think of this is sort of having a timeline in your head, right? So I'm going to give you a lot of ideas and protocols. And if you think about kind of placing those on a timeline of most stringent to most lax, that might be a good way to deal with all the information that's going to come at you today. Um, another way to think about reopening is to have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. This is most common. This is what we're seeing from government organizations. This is what we're seeing from local health departments. Um, so having a template that you can put together with things that you can control first, like your cleaning protocols, um, your parent traffic flow, and then sort of plugging in the actual floor rotation sheets, your class lesson plans, your staffing plans in order of, uh, maybe one class allowed in the gym at a time, all the way to your plan C, which is like full go, right? All classes in. So chances are as those, those pieces of information, those mandates get can, uh, carried out and get handed down to you as a business owner, you're probably gonna have to put these into either a spectrum of your plan or your plan A, your plan B, or your plan C, okay? So because we have some moving targets and some information lacking, right, from our local departments, what can we actually prepare now? So to answer this, I want to tell you about something that I, I've just recently done and it's actually not finished, but I've taken a stab at carrying out a regional and actually a national parent survey. Huge undertaking and I recognize I'm gonna be lacking more answers than I'm actually getting, but what I wanted to do over here on our side of the pond was to divide our country into regions and states and take a stab at getting some parent opinions and some parent feedback. We were seeing a lot of gyms doing individual surveys, which I actually do recommend to get the kind of a temperature check from your parents and how they're feeling about things. 
but I wanted to compare it to sort of a, a broader spectrum. And what I have learned so far, and the survey is not shut down yet, but the largest data pool that I've gotten back was from the Northeast region. So those are parents from New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, all the states that were hit really hard. I wanted to, to see how they felt about coming back to the gym. What I learned that was very different than um, a couple of the small gym surveys was that parents are in two camps, right? It seems to be number one, that all team parents are ready to come back as soon as we open the door. So if you're a competitive gym, that's great news for you. Or um, the rec parents, it seemed to be half and half, right? So they were either super excited to get their kids back out the door and into classes, or they wanted to practice social distancing a little bit longer and take it easy and be more cautious. What I also found was that of the people who were not planning to return from day one, uh, it wasn't due to financial hardship like we are all assuming. That was my number one, that was a shocker for me. I, I did assume that it would be more financially related, but um, the responses that I've gotten back say that it's more due to social distancing. So what I gather from this parent survey on the whole and how this relates to what we can do now is number one, use this time to build trust with your parents, okay? They wanna be heard. They want to be heard right now. They wanna know that you are addressing the situation of reopening since you have time. Um, they uh, do, majority of everyone, as I would have expected, do expect for gyms to have protocols in place for cleaning procedures and um, extra precautions due to the pandemic. We kind of know that. Um, but what the, the actual comments, I gave them a text box at the end to give us any comments about what they would expect of their gym to do right now. Resoundingly, it was cleaning protocols and, um, digital content. The reason they love digital content is because they feel like the coaches care about their children. So I, I, can tell you that the amount of people that commented about tuition or money or made any financial statements was minuscule compared to either great communication they were already getting from their gyms or a lack of communication from their gyms and their coaches, okay? Um, and then the next comment was about how they expected their gym to prepare the kids for new procedures and safety precautions. So with that being said, I think there's a lot we can prepare and a lot that we can do right now. We can also talk about digital programming. We can talk about the benefits of that. This situation has been so interesting because from the chair that I sit in, as I said, I, I talk to a lot of different gym owners and what I've seen is that we were either caught in a really bad situation financially where we weren't prepared to take this new challenge on, or we were there were a lot of people that were ready to jump on the whole digital platform transition. So um, we had to kind of force ourselves to go from gym owners and business owners to entrepreneurs, right? So now we've had a chance to kind of take a step back and see what has worked and maybe what hasn't worked so well for some gyms. And I do have some opinions on that and some, some, um, some data and some offerings to give you there because I do think that there's a benefit to continuing uh, to build on whatever digital platform you started using. So we're gonna go over that a little bit. And then finally at the end, we're definitely gonna talk about, you know, the questions that you're popping in the chat. And then I know you all will probably have a lot of what if scenarios. So we'll, we'll go over that. All right, so as I see it, we can break this up into phases, right? So before reopening, during reopening, and then after reopening. Before I get started with this, I wanna let you know that we are um, willing to turn this into a PDF and send all of this to you. So don't feel like you have to furiously write everything down. There is a lot of information here. I'm going to try and keep this to an hour and hopefully less than an hour, okay? So feel free to tell me to speed up or, or slow down as we go along too. All right, so things that we can do before we reopen. Even though we're missing information from our local government, we don't have to know about how many kids we're allowed to have in the gym and what our square footage is and all of the things that we're getting stressed out about right now, right? So we can be making a list of the supplies that we need to purchase. I'm sure you've, you've already started to tackle this in your head. I know some companies are selling out. 
So now is the time to collaborate with people, reach out and say, hey, I'm having a really hard time finding bulk hand sanitizer. Who's got what? Where can I get this? Okay. So we know about hand sanitizer, uh, bleaching solutions, uh, whatever multi-purpose solutions you're going to use. When we think about bleaching solutions, there are different protocols out there. I've seen um, leaving a solution on for 10 seconds, letting it dry, then wiping it off. There are certain percentages that have been better than others in the solutions. So do your own research there. Um, some people are using foggers depending on how far you wanna take this. I know that some gyms are using foggers for cleaning mists. Some gyms um, are providing masks for their students, some are not. So here's what I wanna say about masking, masking, okay? Front desk, absolutely. Any employees, at least we over here have mandates. We have to provide masks for our employees, okay? So that being said, there are safety precautions when you think about masks for children. We are not, this isn't a retail shop, right? We're asking them to do physical activity. So you have concerns with peripheral vision. It's gonna cover the top of their nose. Um, you have concern with carbon dioxide ingestion. Um, you have so many concerns with sprinting and anything aerobic, you know, that you're asking these kids to do. So we don't have solid um, rules on you must wear a mask or, or you may not, okay? Most gyms that I know of over here are not letting their children use masks because of safety precautions. And there are some insurance companies that are actually telling us they won't cover us if we do have the children wear masks on the floor. That being said, the employees are a different story. So if you would like for your coaches to wear masks, that's a decision that you have to make. And then of course, check with your local health department because they'll probably, if you guys operate the same way as we do, they're the be all end all. So, okay. so. Masks. I'm sure you guys have a lot of comments about masks. That seems to be a controversial topic as well. Um, all right, alcohol swabs, wipes, shop towels, and terry cloth towels as well. Okay, so alcohol swabs, the tiny little ones that you're going to be using for door handles or cell phones, um, you know, different, um, like I said, people have been selling out. So you're going to need a range of supplies. You might think about disposable versus non disposable where you're gonna be disposing of dirty towels, um, what your protocols are gonna be with gloves. So as far as supplies go, it's never too early to start purchasing those now, especially if you're gonna use alcohol spray for shoes or feet, that's also something to think about. All right, so we're gonna think about closing all spectator areas. Parent room, that's an obvious one, right? That's gonna be so hard to control and, um, I definitely recommend closing your parent room. That's a, that's a no brainer. Lobbies, front desks, any place that parents congregate is something that you're gonna have to control now. I think it's a given that we're gonna have some sort of social distancing requirements to follow, at least in our initial stage, stages or our phase ones. So make a list of any place in your gym that people congregate. That could even be around a whiteboard. If you're a gym that does lesson plans on a community whiteboard, you might have to think about replacing that to a bigger screen or maybe even using a projector for the night for lesson plans. Whatever it is that's gonna give the most visibility to um, common materials, you need to think about shutting off um, congregating areas. Marking floor with standing spots and zones. So if you've been to the grocery store by now, I'm sure all the floors are marked with six foot spots, okay? Um, if you have parents coming in to your facility still, you'll definitely need to mark standing spots. Um, if people are queuing to come to the front desk, you need to make sure that's taken care of for sure. And then marking off zones. You might have just no entry zones. So whether you're using colored duct tape on the floor or you're using actual construction roll tape, that would be something to put on your Amazon list or wherever you're ordering supplies from. But we need to think about um, traffic patterns for kids. So I know in my gym floor, even without the pandemic, we always had uh, a way to the bathroom, right? So because we had little ones that would run in front of the vault runway all the time. So we inevitably made a pattern with, uh, I think it was like mermaid duct tape or something, that led the little kids to the bathroom. So this is something that you can build on now if you have specific walking paths for children. 
great for social distancing. Something else we kind of touched on, parent surveys. Okay, so again, trust and communication. You cannot go wrong. It's just like a relationship with anyone, right? It's a relationship with your family. Uh, trust and communication, you cannot overdo it. If you screw this up, <laughs> if you have great relationships with your family, your customers, your parents, you're gonna have some leeway, right? So sending out a parent survey and getting really specific, asking them what they care about, what they expect to see, giving them a chance to give you some ideas. Guys, you don't have to know all of the answers right now. You don't. I don't think anyone expects you to be an expert in pandemic control. Nobody is. So giving them a chance to work with you and feel like they're a part of this with you is only going to build brand loyalty and it's going to help your gym. That being said, doing the same thing for your coaches is going to help them stay engaged. So maybe your staff isn't big enough. Maybe you don't have a need to do, you know, a survey on Typeform or Google Forms or SurveyMonkey, whatever you use. Maybe just some personal emails saying, hey, you know, especially if you haven't been in contact with them, contacting you to specifically ask you how you feel about reopening. Are you scared? Are you worried? What can I do to ease your fears to make this easier to come back? Okay, so a, a specific touch point to each coach, not talking about anything other than them and making it making the whole conversation focused on them will also go a long way. If you haven't already done it, I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, a gym deep clean, it's imperative. Not, not like wiping off your dumbbells, not just giving the beam a sweep, an actual deep clean like the health department is going to come close you down, <laughs> okay? A, a deep, deep clean. This is also where we're finding a lot of, I'm giving you a caution here, we're finding a lot of companies starting to send out emails about UV light products and industrial foggers and all the things. I would caution you before you think about investing a lot of cash into these products that the research is still coming out, right? So the initial research that we had with this virus is sort of creeping around it's changing it's changing so before you go investing money in uv products maybe give it a minute to watch and especially see what happens over here okay but um the the jury's still out on that one parent emails and graphics and what i mean by this is your communications to your parents when you actually have an idea of what's going to happen. You can write those now. You can make templates. You can create really cool branded uh, infographics if you'd like to send out a cute visual instead of a texty, wordy email to your parents. Um, I would suggest building those now and then making some graphics that are specifically for children, specifically worded in a way that these kids are going to be comforted and okay with the new changes and the new protocols that they're going to have to know when they come back, right? So we want to find really nice ways to communicate with both our parents, our staff, and our athletes of the new changes that we're about to give them. You also want to make sure that you are making some really nice graphics, signs, whatever collateral you want to make that you can post around the gym in various sizes huge sizes to go in the lobby, small sizes for the bathroom stalls, um, really nice graphics, maybe some coloring sheets that are, I, and trust me, I don't know where these exist. I'm still looking for them. Um, some nice uh, coloring sheets, new songs, new lesson plans that kind of incorporate the current times. If anybody has a good lead for that, please let me know because I'm on the lookout. But I think it's really important that we're making our communications relatable for the kids and the parents. All right, so here is the big unknown. The time that we spend on admin and programming right now, there are a million things that fall under this category. Um, and this would be where I think the variables are gonna come into play with head counts, social distancing rules and square footage, um, time restraints, how long do we have to follow these square footage or head counts, rules, whatever it's gonna be, right? It's probably going to be different for all of us. So there's a couple things that I think we will be able to plan now. 
Um, so number one, we know that we want to cut down on the amount of cash payments that we're taking, right? We're assuming everyone's still going to pay us. Having a way to take contactless payments is 100% uh, you have to do it. You have to have it. If that's something that you don't have for your gym yet, this is a great time to figure out how to make that happen. Obviously, Love Admin already has that built into their system. So if you're already our customer, you're good to go. Just make sure that you're still implementing that and really pushing that as a way for parents to pay you. Having some template lesson plans and template floor rotation sheets are really important right now. So I would say that lesson plans are the easiest. That's the lowest hanging fruit, right? We already know what we do in our classes, but I will tell you, I talk to a lot of gyms and not everybody has lesson plans. And a lot of the problems that I see from um, in an operational way come down to not being very organized on the floor. So if you are a gym that has some room to pick up your organization a little bit and already need your coaches to become a little more efficient, this is a fantastic opportunity for you to revamp your lesson plans. Those coaches need to have plans in hand before each class starts, regardless, regardless of this pandemic, right? So this is a great time for you to develop lesson plans that are socially distant friendly. And then also start to work your phases in for plan A, plan B, plan C. What if I can only have one class in the gym at a time? What do my stations look like? What if I can have two? What if I can keep team on this side and put a class over here? What does that make my floor grid look like? What does that mean for my mats? Because now we can't have kids rotating on different mats, right? We have to have personal equipment. We have to figure out how to keep the kid with the equipment. This would be on the most stringent end of your spectrum planning or in your plan one, your phase A, whatever the most stringent is gonna be, personal equipment and keeping kids from rotating on stations, okay? So when you're spending all of your time right now, I feel like this might be the place that trips you up. So I don't want you to get too stressed out over the admin and the programming just yet. Just having a loose template is gonna put you ahead of the game, okay? All right, so we just talked about adjusting class ratios and schedules and having different versions, um, making sure that the registration process is crystal clear for those parents and that you're not having to spend time, um, you know, we don't, we never want to spend a lot of time registering parents anyhow, but we want to make sure that they're not feeling compelled to actually come to the gym to register. So making sure that you have online registration set up, making sure that you're taking contactless payments 100%. The next big decision that you have to make is, are you gonna do temperature checks or not? Some gyms here have done this at reopening and some gyms have not. It's been 50-50. So um, over here, what we have to be cognizant of is that sometimes we have a liability when we're recording personal data. So kids, names, and temperatures. Uh, they're, they're still, we're still having conversations on that. So. For the gyms that are taking temperatures, they're getting the temporal contactless temperature takers, right? The ones that you can put on a child's temple. Um, and every gym has their own protocol. I've seen some gyms that will not let a kid return for 48 hours. I've seen other gyms that have worked their protocols to include a 72 hour window and then a doctor's note. So it's totally up to number one, you and what you're comfortable with. And number two, uh, your health department. Over here, we can have our governor tell us, yes, you're free to open legally, but our health department can come in and say, no, actually, we're not comfortable with that. And they're the ones that have to give us the final say. So if you have something like that in your area, just make sure that you are checking with your health department before you make a decision on that. But put that on your list to follow up with. That being said, that's going to fall into some of those new protocols, right, that you're going to have for your gym, which is going to take training. So I think that you're gonna find when you're planning, some gyms may not have their typical job description to follow anymore. Some gyms are gonna have new tasks. Or I'm sorry, some coaches will have new tasks. Um, some coaches might have more. Some coaches might be in a floater role previously when they were always a coach. So that's up to you to decide where you wanna put your staff, right? But it's gonna take a very mature coach and a mature staff member to man the door to do temperatures. 
So as you're thinking about organizing your protocols, you need to think about who's got the skill set to make sure who's got the skill set to talk to a parent and tell them, I'm sorry, this temperature is high. We can't allow you in the building. Okay. So that being said, we need to make sure that we're training staff up front way before day one, assigning them to places that make sense probably multiple times with these trainings, right? You're going to have office staff, you're going to have floor coaches, you're going to have floaters that need to just uh, manage traffic control, kid going in and out, uh, reminding parents that they can't come in on the gym floor anymore, whatever it is, these are new rules for everyone. And we're going to need someone to manage the transition. And you can't over communicate, like I've always said, you cannot over communicate social distancing rules because this is new, this is gonna feel foreign to people, over communicate. And don't forget about your bathrooms, your lobby and your traffic plans, okay? So have a plan, assign your staff accordingly. I don't think I can fit any more bullet points on this page, so I'm gonna switch. <laughs> All right, so hopping into, the during right so and just one note before we kind of move into this just to shift your mindset a little bit i want to remind you that we had zero time to plan for a shutdown right so i don't think that any parents really fault the gym owners for how we've handled it per se i think that they're gonna uh, remember how you treated them during the shutdown but it's super important that we we give planning right now our full attention because they have made it very clear that they are judging us based on our reopening plans. So that being said, again, um, marking off floor plans and walkways, I'm a big fan of color duct tape, right? And then your lesson planning and rotation sheets are key. This is what the parents are gonna see. This is what the kids are going to remember. They're going to remember how organized you were. And this is what is going to make the biggest impact on their perception of how prepared you are. How organized are you on the floor? Pre-setting equipment in personal stations, no rotating for each event. This is another variable that is going to limit what you can do on the floor, right? Think about that for a minute. If you can't, if you have to have personal stations to cut down on mat cleaning and contact on equipment, that pretty much means limited rotation or no rotation, right? So maybe you're just doing floor the first day. Maybe you're just doing vault drills on the vault runway. Maybe you're just having one child on one tramp the whole class instead of rotating to different areas of the gym. Whatever it is, uh, we need to find ways for your particular program to make sure that they're in the gym and they're getting instruction, but they're not actually touching every item in the gym, right? Especially those items that we cannot clean right now. Drop off and pick up. Parking lot, parking lot safety, this is a big one. So some gyms are doing uh, separate entry doors and exit doors. So we have staff, we've seen staff actually at the door to escort kids to the cars. Sometimes everybody's parking lot is different, right? And not everybody feels comfortable just sending a child out into the parking lot. Um, if you need to assign a staff member to be an escort, please plan for that now. Um, whatever it is, some people uh, are asking parents to walk them to the door, drop them off, um, so they don't have to have staff to escort them. So that's an option too. Uh, everybody is pretty much asking parents to remain in their cars, right? If we're closing off the parent room, we don't have a lot of other options. So um, except for toddlers and except for those classes that involve parents in the class, you know, you know your, your customers the best. So you'll know how to structure that. Um, but for those parents that don't have to be involved in the class, I think it's very important for them to have space or have instruction, have somewhere for them to be, right? We need for the children to arrived, ready to go arrive dressed no bags uh water bottles are going to be an issue uh if you have the if you have the funds to in, uh, install a contactless water fountain that would be amazing not everybody can do that 
Um, but having clearly labeled water bottles and having the children be absolutely sure they're not leaving anything behind is key or else you're gonna have to throw it out at the end of the night and that would be sad. So this is important, giving each child their own marker to stand on and not allowing children to stand in line. This is gonna be another sort of lesson plan issue to think about. So I'm a huge fan of Norbert's. I don't know if you guys ever order from them over there, but Norbert's is a company that's very rec friendly, very toddler friendly, and they have this great line of vinyl markers. They're like, um, there's math sets, there's farm animals, there's arrows, there's letters, all different things, but they're just rubber vinyl pieces. And I don't know what it is about these things, but my mommy and me, my preschoolers, and even some of my lower level school age kids, they just love to have these in their hands. They're heavy, they're weighted. It's very like tactile and textury. So if you have the time and the resources, I would suggest that you look on the Norbert's website and look at some of these vinyl, oh gosh, there's a bazillion of them. So they're just rubber pieces. <laughs> But I like them to give to kids as opposed to carpet squares because you can clean this, these rubber vinyl pieces at the end of each class, no problem. With a carpet square, it's collecting germs at the end of every class and you can't really clean carpet squares very well, okay? But if each kid is responsible for their own vinyl piece, their own rubber dot, they can carry that around and they're gonna have a place for their body at all times that is six feet away from their friend they can't hug them, they can't touch them, they can't, can't hit them, can't get in trouble, right? So it's also great because you can give them their dot and then tell them, okay, between each station, I need you to give me 10 dish rocks or 10 supermans or 10 frog jumps, whatever it's gonna be. It's super easy for your coaches to give instructions with these little vinyl carry arounds. And I'll make sure you guys get that website too. And again, giving printed lesson plans, we kind of already talked about that, but it needs to be something that your coaches can keep with them so there's no confusion about where anyone is supposed to be at all times, and they're not having to congregate around a giant whiteboard, okay? We need to make sure uh, for contract tracing purposes that we're taking mandatory attendance at the beginning of every class. If this was a process in your gym that you used to do at the end of the night before the staff left just to kind of tick some boxes, it needs to be worked into your process more formally now. It has to be done at the beginning of every class because we need to be able to contact trace if anyone gets sick. There can't be any question about who was in your building at one point in time. So giving clear verbal directions and rules to the kids before class, this is super important. Whatever protocols you're gonna make with no high fives, no hugging, um, these are your times to go to the restroom, this is what we need you to do when you enter and exit the restroom, whatever your decisions are going to be. I would even suggest that you communicate that at each event. If you're doing floor and vault, you need to do the directions at stretch, at floor, and at vault. Again, with the over communicating. And then making sure that you have a clear plan worked out with your staff. So um, some gyms don't have the ability to create a separate entrance and exit for your actual activity floor. If that's the case and you can't do that, then you need to make sure that you're starting and dismissing classes where you're not compromising your social distancing requirements, right? So maybe you let the kid out one at a time, you have them enter one at a time, whatever that's going to be, um, making sure you're allowing time for that. Okay, um, hand sanitizer, we talked about purchasing that in bulk, but this is super important to have them sanitize their hands when they enter, when they exit, and if you want to involve um, tiny hand sanitizer stations at each event, that's a good idea. Some gyms are doing alcohol spray for feet or shoes. This is harder con to control, right? But if you have children that are going to the bathroom and they're touching things along the way, maybe they sneak and check their phone along the way, I would highly advise you to um, decide what you want your cell phone policy to be for both your staff and your kids, okay? Cell phones are super dirty, we know that. Um, but whatever there has a high propensity to be touched along the way, we need to have those wipes or alcohol swabs kind of ready. This is a big one. 
again, depending on what your mandates are, right? We don't know how many people you're gonna be allowed to have in your gym at one time, which affects your schedule, which affects how many classes you can have in during one day or one night. But 15 minutes is a good rule of thumb. That's gonna give your coaches a chance to hurry and wipe off all of those personal stations that they just took their kids through. Every mat and every vinyl dot that was used needs to be wiped down, especially, especially if your parents are watching, right? Because you've already done a survey for your gym and you already know what they value. They're gonna value seeing your checklist and they're gonna value uh, knowing that you are paying a lot of attention to resetting classes between times. Um, all the things that they're giving you ideas for, you wanna make a big show of it, right? It's, it's a show, but it's sincere because we do care about cleaning and we do care about safety. Okay, so I thought I would give you some um, ideas of things that you could put in a first phase. So this would be like super stringent. If you have to go super stringent, what are some ways that we treat our equipment? Well, we take away that chalk bucket for bars. That's an obvious one. You can create personal, um, you can ask your children when you do phase bars back in, right? Whenever that's going to be for you, if they need chalk to carry their own chalk in their own bag going forward. That chalk bucket, it's a cesspool of germs for weightlifters also, I know that. In-ground pits, if you are lucky enough to have a standalone and you have an in-ground pit, um, unless you have gotten completely new pit foam or you have taken all of the covers off of your pit blocks to wash or you have found some miraculous way to clean out this pit, um, consider closing it off so we can get a good baseline gym operation going first. Right, I've seen some gyms actually building plywood covers, uh, which has been kind of cool because they've been able to, um, it's been more standing room for the coaches so they can get out of the way, but I've seen really cool pictures of people actually building a little box shelf that goes over their pit. Um, and I know they use that for, for judging also, they'll have the judges sit on that when they have in-house meets. A tiny one to think about for your little ones, especially stickers and not stamps. Those stamps, just one more thing you have to clean off, right? With alcohol every single time you use it. So let's get rid of the preschool stamps right now and buy a bunch of stickers. Um, I know you guys have a pound store, been in it, you have stickers. Super small investment, okay? Just get a whole bunch of cheap stickers. Here with the, the Norbert's vinyl spots again, um, I will make sure that I give you guys the, I'm sure you can just Google it as well, but it's a super great company and I'm sure there are other companies that make the same thing. I just know that Norbert has a huge line of, of different kind of vinyl products that are really fun. This is a hard one, guys. If you have mommy and me class, um, you have toddler open gym, you have preschool or kinder gym, getting rid of those props that we can't clean, we're gonna have to stretch our mind to come up with new lesson plans that don't include props. I know that there are some companies out there like Happy Gymnastics that are designing prop-free lesson plans. Um, you can look up uh, the lady that makes those, her name is Sarah. She's fantastic, Happy Gymnastics. I'm sure there are other companies that have pre-made curriculums with no props. Um, but it's it's a must. You got to have some in your back pocket. So plan those out. And then again, no use of equipment that can't be cleaned. That's a huge one. How do you clean your bars? What do you do with fiberglass? I, I don't have the answer to that. It's something to research. I'm just trying to call to attention all of the places that we can be transmitting germs. Um, but bars with our hands and beam for our feet. I I have seen some children not being super hygienic on those beams, I will just say. So until we come up with a way to safely clean those beams that you are to a level that you're comfortable with, I say we, we don't use equipment that can't be cleaned until we figure that out, okay? So those would be some ideas for a, a stringent phase one. So when we're thinking about after we have opened, it's gonna be really important going to be crucial for you to do coaching debriefs at the end of every night. These coaches are, we're asking them to do a lot right now. We're asking them to take on new responsibilities and stretch their mind both, you know, mentally and emotionally in new ways and have a little bit more, a lot more responsibility. So at the end of the night, 
we've clearly done our cleaning between whatever classes we have, but we need to make sure we have an actual documentable closing cleaning checklist that everybody is responsible for. Everybody needs to have accountability for these new protocols and uh, following social distancing with each other, not just from coach to kid, but from coach to coach, okay? So we need whatever protocols you want to put in place, you need to have checklists that they're accountable for. Ask them what worked and what didn't. Let them give you input. If you're not out there coaching, you're not going to see it through their eyes, okay? Maybe the flow is weird. Maybe the flow could be improved some way. Give them a chance to tell you. This, I think, is what I, I always ran into. I always had a plan. I implemented, I executed, and then at the end of the event, I found, wow, I really could have used an extra body at that station, or this part of my plan did not really go well. So there's a high probability that you might need to rearrange staff, um, take some people out, add some people in, but that traffic control for parents, communication, the cleaning, escorting kids in the parking lot, and then that temperature taking, those are gonna be really important areas that, that we can't mess up. So we wanna make sure your staff's on board with that. And then a really great way to make sure we're keeping our thumb on building parent trust is by social posting of you following your new protocols. So maybe that's in your gym Facebook group where it's only members of your gym that, that see this. Um, maybe that'll push some people off the edge to kind of come on back. Look, you know, we're taking a lot of precautions. We're doing all the things really well and the water's fine, come on in. A uh, Facebook page, right? That's gonna go to people that are not currently enrolled in your gym, but that's also just, you know, that, that's nice to send out and put out in the community that you're being socially conscious. And then emails as well. So again, you can't over communicate. So email to the parents, what just happened the night before? Hey, first night of class was fantastic. This is what we did and this is how we handled it. Here's what we're gonna continue to do going forward. You're gonna need to build in some extra time for a little extra TLC, okay? So this is important to check in with parents, especially in the first couple of weeks upon reopening to ask about health status, right? Because we don't know what's going to happen. So we need to be communicating with parents about the health of their children. How are they feeling? You know, you don't have to give them all of the details, but we want to know what's going to happen with these kids after we put them back in a gym and let them congregate again. You know, we hope that nothing is going to spike, but we need to be keeping our thumb on how these kids are feeling, how the parents are feeling, and obviously how our coaches are feeling. So allow some extra time for comforting the kids. You know, I know that some gym owners are a little bit, uh, they have stronger feelings about not having the coaches stand around and just talking to people, but that's actually really valuable. You know, spending time on payroll to allow those coaches to build relationships with the kids and the, the parents six feet away <laughs> is really valuable, right? Because this is a time that we have to be building stronger relationships. Overall, we need to have our thumb on the social emotional component of coaches and kids right now. If you think about all of these new rules, protocols, policies, procedures, all the things that you're already having maybe even a physical reaction to, imagine how those coaches are gonna feel being responsible for the health of these kids. Um, imagine how those kids are gonna feel when they walk up to the door and they have to get their temperature taken in the beginning. Like, are all of these new policies and procedures gonna make them feel like a science project? I don't know. Are, you know, this gym that they were at before their shutdown, this was a second home to them. So they've been missing it and they're expecting that to be the same when they get back. So it's gonna be our job to help them transition, um, you know, safely for their own, their own physical health, but also social, emotionally, we need to help them transition and get used to a new way of living inside our gym. So if there are any things that you can think of that might help those athletes transition and become comfortable faster, we want to brainstorm those now. That's why I mentioned the lesson plans, the coloring sheets, you know, we can't do the head, shoulders, knees, and toes song anymore in preschool class. We don't want all the touching happening, right? 
So we have to find some new cute little monikers for the kids to follow. Maybe um, some new little sayings, a goodbye song, a beginning song, whatever it's gonna be, we have to be thinking now about how we're gonna help them transition emotionally and, and have these safety standards stick. They need to stick. All right, so last slide here, and then I'm gonna read some questions and comments and open it up to you guys. So usually when I talk about this topic, we always come around to digital programming. So I thought I'd just tackle it head on and build it in here, okay? So the thing that I really love about this time is that as stressful as it has been, it's forcing us to think about new revenue streams. It's forcing us to diversify what we offer. You know, if you put all of your eggs in one basket, when something like this happens, you have nothing to fall back on. And it's not that digital programming doesn't work or that online, it's, it's not that kids don't like online content. I know that to be untrue for a fact, but it's that we didn't have any time to plan for it. That's the problem. Some of us were really shoved into this very fast. And, and when you feel pressured to come up with something very quickly, we don't always do the best job that we could. So now we have the time to look back on what we did. Did we offer uh, Zooms? Did we offer Facebook Lives? Did we offer a membership? Did we use Love Gymnastics and push out content through our content sharing timeline? Whatever it is that we did, let's see what worked and what didn't and let's build on that. Because there's a whole market of people that will buy that. They will. There is a whole market of moms that want a digital on-demand um, product, a digital class that they can have at home for whatever reason. There's all sorts of pockets of moms and parents that want that, okay? So it's really easy for us to build on that now, especially um, after we, we've reopened again, we can kind of look at a hybrid model. I'm a big fan. The other thing I will say about online programming is that when you're open again, it's a good option for makeup classes. If you can develop this and invest a little time and money into it, if you have a very nice digital offering in some capacity, it's going to be a lot easier for you to say, hey, little Susie, I'm really sorry that you couldn't make class this month, but we have a great online library. I would really invite you. You have unlimited access to go in and uh, download all of the level one classes to get your makeups in, whatever you want to make your policy. It's great for that kind of thing. It's also great if you are a gym that runs a competitive program, maybe, maybe you have a cheer team, maybe you have a, a rec team or, you know, even these badge, badge teams, right? Like we have USAG, even for your, your highly competitive teams, if you have tryouts, maybe you want to make a prereq class that you have online, for example. Um, hey, we have cheer team tryouts. I need for anyone that's trying out to complete the prerequisite of stretching and jumps first. So that way you know what the tryout material is gonna be when you actually come to tryouts. Make it $10 a class, 15 pounds a class, whatever it's gonna be. You have a little bit of an additional income stream right there. They're already up to date on what you're going to have them do when they get to class. You already know what kind of baseline physical education they have. So that would be another idea for keeping and a reason to keep your digital stuff. We went through the makeup class option. The other thing, guys, you know, I hate to open this can of worms, but we don't know what's going to happen. So having this as a built-in contingency plan, if there's a next time, this isn't going to be near as drastic as it was this time. It's not going to feel as panic striking as it did this time because we've been through it before and now we already have these products built out. So this is an opportunity for you to document everything you're doing and work it into your systems and your protocols. This is a great time for you to go to your parents and say, hey, if something like this happens again, this is how we handle it, this is what we offer, this is how you get your value for the money that you've paid us. You already have a plan in place. It's also a really great thing to have for very short closings that you build in. If you wanna offer some sort of um, holiday alternative, um, and here's an idea. If you want to shut down to do a deep clean, you can give your kids something to do in the meantime. Say you want to take three days to shut down and have all staff come in and do a deep clean, which would be fantastic for parent trust, right? Just having come through this, it would be great for you to do this again in six months or a year. And then you have some content and you already have a plan in place to offer them. 
and you're building more trust that you're cleaning your gym again. And this wasn't just a one and done thing. You, you continuously care about the health and safety of your clients. And also the more you offer, the more chances you have for people to interact with you, right? So if you offer a way for them to follow you online through your app, you know, Love Gymnastics has, has an app. You can um, make sure that they're engaging with that to build in a little bit more loyalty and kind of increase your brand. It's, it's only a good thing. You can't go wrong with it. Okay, I am done talking. I am going to check the chat box here. Um, stop share. And I'm going to see what we have in here. So please feel free. I don't know if you guys can unmute yourself, but if you want to speak up, please feel free to do that. And Dave, I'm going to, can we unmute Dave? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think I can unmute people. I don't know if you guys can unmute yourself. Uh, let me just see if I can do that forum. All right, so just looking through the group chat here, can you share the questions from the parent survey? And yeah, I can definitely, I can share that with you. Um, I will, let's see the best way to get this out to you, I'm not sure. I will figure out how to get the survey to you guys, but I can tell you there were only 10 questions. Um, again, I divided it into five different regions for a country. And I asked them if they would consider coming back at the first date announced by their gym if they would consider coming back in the summer, if they would consider coming back in uh, phase one of our countries, we have three phases. I, no one's following them, but we have three phases technically. So I basically just wanted to see how parents would answer when I phrased the question a little different way, okay? Then I asked them, uh, of course, what program they were in, competitive, mommy and me, rec, pre-team. I asked them, if they were, if they would uh, consider summer camps, online summer camps, and then uh, if they weren't planning to come back, why is that? Was it financial hardship, summer plans, social distancing, or other? And then I gave them a chance at the bottom to tell us what they would like to see their gym offer of value. Because I was talking to so many gym owners and they were getting frustrated with, you know, we're doing all these digital things and we're getting a variance of participation. I just don't know what these parents want. So that was a really valuable thing to actually just let them say what is working and what is not. Let's see uh, more Kim, questions. Sorry, Kim, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I think that you'll need to unmute them because you're the host. So if you click on the participants gotcha. list down the bottom, then the uh, fly out will come on the right hand side. And then you should have the option to unmute people. Oh, blimey, there you go. <laughs> I've unmuted everyone. Whoa. Okay. All right, I've just muted you all again, Dave. I'm not sure how to handle this because if I unmute everyone, it's going to be super loud. So, how about I, I unmute and then everybody mute themselves if you don't want to speak? Sound good? Is that good? All right. I think I did. Okay, so uh, yeah, if you don't want to be heard while the, the dog is barking or the kettle's on, mute yourself. Okay. Um, Norbert's, yes, that's Norbert's. Let's see. Yep, that's the right website, I think. Uh, so, so um, Kim, I, I have a, a couple of questions for you. Yeah. Um, you talked about the parent um, email and graphic. Is that uh, the messaging on that, is that going to be specific for each club or is that something generic? Because if it's something generic, then it's something that maybe that we can um, knock up and provide to the clubs. Yeah, so what I have seen is I've seen really nice uh, templates structured into athlete, parents, coach, gym, or just different kind of subsections of people they wanted to have different rules for. So mm -hmm. I've seen one infographic with all of those compartments and then it would be editable so you as a gym could go in and fill in whatever rules you would like to have for your gym mm -hmm. um, and then also had those different graphics individually so you can make sure just to send to the parents the children and the parent protocols if that makes sense so just different ways to post it okay good uh, so 
let's talk about that one offline because we might be able to provide something for the yeah for the clubs. that's an easy one i think we could do okay and then the other question was on the the video content so the digital content pre-canned versus personal so what i've seen in the market is there was uh, the big rush, so when everything kicked off, it was right, we need content, we need content, and us as um, Love Admin and Love Gymnastics, we provided content for the community to use, which we was very happy to do. Um, but comparing that to personal content, so that is content coming from the coaches, um, I feel that there must be more value if it's coming from the coach, that the kids have uh, a personal relationship. Do we have any data or any learnings from that from any other organizations that you're dealing with? Yeah, so what I know from that is uh, judging from the comments that the parents made on the bottom of my survey um, and then talking to the owners of gyms that ran digital content in, through various ways, Facebook Lives, bought content, um, emailed, Zoom, all the different options, right? So it seems like parents are valuing Zooms for connection. So they like it when their child's personal coach will be the one doing the Zoom, if that makes sense. They, it seems like they feel like their child is more cared for and like they've been given attention, whether or not they've been paying. So, so Zooms and Facebook Lives for the connection value, but when you're talking about content, I think that that's a personal preference per gym because Content is something that's best kept on demand. We wanna be able to offer that to parents to download whenever they want. So everybody has a different schedule and that's a place where we can get into like the nitty gritty a little bit more. And I know a lot of people are really hesitant to offer uh, a lot of instruction because they're scared the kids are gonna do something at home to hurt themselves. They're afraid of the liability. Um, what I do know is that a lot of the insurance companies over here at least, are already on board, right? Our, yeah. our USAG status is not attached to our insurance status. They're two unrelated things. We get breaks in our premiums if we're a member of USAG, but they're not related. And I think that that's different for you guys. I think maybe your insurance and BG are more connected than we have. So check with BG, check with your insurance. But there are a lot of content platforms coming out that have pre-recorded um, content laden videos that are very valuable that you can purchase and host on your site, or you can um, purchase and kind of push out through your app or your email drip. But I think that you need both, right? I think that if we're in a shutdown where we're not seeing faces every week, you need to have something where you can offer a connection value, whether that's uh, Zoom, Facebook Live, or something pre recorded that you're sending out to the child personally. And then something that has a little bit of content in it, whatever, whatever level that is for you that you are comfortable with, if that makes sense. Okay, good. Just, just one point on that content, uh, just for the Love Admin customers, uh, we've just added the Fitness and Strength uh, Awards, the BG Fitness and Strength Awards to the Development Program and the Flexibility and Coordination. So they, uh, they look like good programs that the kids can do at home. So. Uh, You'll find that under the development program tab. Okay, there's a question from David Holdsworth. Uh, the question is, how or can you support gymnasts doing skills? Do we, do we reduce skills to avoid coaching, supporting gymnasts? So I'm assuming you are speaking about when we actually come back to the gym. Mm -hmm. When we come back to the gym, these kids are gonna be super deconditioned. That's an opportunity for us to figure this out. Um, when they get back into the gym, regardless of whether you're uh, tumbling a tramp or rec or team, all of these kids are going to be deconditioned and not in the same strength shape as when they left. So we're going to have to spend time doing strength and shaping and flexibility all over again, um, both for safety of the children and just because they're not going to be able to do the same things that you would have asked them eight weeks ago, right? So that's an opportunity for us to coach in a way that we don't have to spot them and that we can stick to our social distancing. You know, anyone can coach a hollow or coach a dish from six feet away, right? We can give them verbal cues instead of tactical pushing and pulling and touching. So that might be a training point for your staff. You might have to call that to their attention and say, hey, this is really gonna challenge your ability to break down these skills in a new way. We're gonna have to verbally coach we can't touch them now, but what other ways can we teach this shape? 
And then that might also give you a really great place to start with lesson plans because you know that you're going to spend a good four weeks just doing strength work, just doing shaping and just doing cardio, whatever conditioning you want to give them. Okay. Hope that, maybe, that helps. Maybe that feeds into the development program and those programs mm -hmm. being available. Uh, question from Jeff. He says, what about cleaning carpet floor, like roll mats on those floors? Yeah, so we call that carpet bonded foam. Um, there are cleaning, there are definitely companies out there that will come and do that for you now. Um, you can purchase a cleaning solution for carpet bonded foam that goes in a regular carpet cleaner, like a carpet washer. <laughs> That's what we've used in the past and it worked fine for us. Um, I believe that this is where the foggers come in. I think there are some companies that um, are using foggers to spread a fine mist all over the carpet floors. So that's also something to look into. Okay, good. Uh, from Glenn, I was under the impression that COVID-19 does not live on soft services longer than three to seven days. Why is all this clearly necessary if the gym has been closed for six weeks? Um, so I assume that you was referring to the cleaning on you know, when the kids come back, but uh, there's some stuff that needs to be done before that. So I guess twofold. Number one, the research, you know, you can find research to support or refute anything. There's confirmation bias out there for all of it. So it's not about what you think and what you feel. It's about what your parents think and feel. We don't know how they feel about um, the research that's out there or what they do or don't believe. So if it takes 15 minutes between classes to wipe down mats again to make them feel better, I would suggest that you do that. Um, we, yeah, we we don't really know 100%. Like I said, I'm, I live in a, a huge yeah. medical community here and there's different research for everything. So if if it makes the parents feel better and it builds their trust, that's that's my vote. Okay, good. And Katrina, uh, Katrina Smith made a, a good response to that as well. Um, Hi Dave, did you guys have a list of appropriate videos we can use in the app? Uh, yeah, I'm going to send that to you. Um, okay, so uh, from Earl's Gymnastics, I think this is. Um, it is, will we be able to use equipment bars, uh, sorry, will we be able to use equipment bars being safely, we're not being able to support the skills on hand. But sorry, not being able to support the skills hands on. So I think that goes back to what you were talking about yeah. earlier on. Yeah, I think you have to connect this to, you know, this transitional time when your your lesson plans are based on building back up that strength and getting the kids conditioned again, because you're spot on. Um, it's not in good judgment for us to ask these kids to do skills that uh, we're not comfortable that they can do without our spot. And then until we know where they are, until we've assessed their strength and their ability and, and their, um, you know, the nerves, their central nervous system and just we don't know where they're at. We don't know what's been going on. So buy yourself some time. There's no reason to rush it. There's no reason to push it. I think we're all in off season right now, pretty much. So um, I would give yourself a solid four weeks at least. That'll give you a chance to assess the kids and then catch up on whatever cleaning procedures you do or don't need to have. And you can decide from there. Okay. Uh, Karen Cheeseman, uh, what happens when getting staff to contribute but they shouldn't be when on furlough? So uh, that's going to be a question, I think, more for uh, next week's webinar. We're going to be covering off that. I'll send out the link to you guys now uh, so you can see the different topics that we're going to be covering, but that's going to be one of them. Uh, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll defer to Sharon for that one. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Stephen Maloney, deep cleaning some equipment is near impossible. Have you had any advice from equipment suppliers on the best way to clean stuff? Wait, sorry. So uh, again, Dave. yeah, it was I'm deep cleaning that. on some equipment is near impossible. Oh. Have you had any advice from equipment suppliers on the best way to clean stuff? <clears throat> yeah, that, that is uh, rightly so a tough one. You know, I've thought about bars and there are definitely solutions. There are cleaning solutions that we can use on bars with wire brushes um, or soft cloths. That's really the only way you can do, but I, I can't imagine a way that we can clean bars without taking all the chalk off of them which the kids won't be happy about. So you're probably gonna have to spend time with a uh, safe cleaning solution uh, and soft cloth, wire brush, and then you're gonna have to spill time, build time building back up the chalk base for the kids before you can safely let them back on the bars. 
Okay, so Lynn Bushell says, uh, FYI, I was quoted just over 2,000 pounds for our gym to be uh, fogs, 950 square meters. Wow. Um, yeah. Okay, a uh, question or a comment here about digital content from uh, Lauren Gillard. Uh, so after seven weeks, I'm certainly struggling with digital content as from uh, my understanding, we are not insured by a BG to offer any skill-based work. Therefore, there is only so much fitness and flexibility you can do before children, especially rec, uh, lose interest. Any tips? So just on that, I was um, speaking with um, one of our customers last week, and I think they were suggesting that BG have, um, they're saying it, uh, and don't quote me on this, you'll need to go directly to BG, but it was something like uh, badges eight through to four uh, was uh, okay for, um, the kids to be doing at home. I think they've amended a couple of the skills um, so that they were safer to do. Is that what you guys are here in the community? Did you pick up on that? Yes, yeah, Barry's got his thumb up. Okay, so um, yeah, it's uh, worth maybe revisiting eight through to four. Uh, I, I think probably, Kim, we could do another webinar just on content, right? Just on digital content. Yeah, I, I kind of have two thoughts on this. So number one, what we've seen over here and kind of what I said from day one, you know, we had this same, I remember the exact day that we kind of had the blanket shut down finally and everybody immediately said, well, we can't do anything online because our insurance won't cover it. There were a lot of assumptions made and I know that BG has um, done great with communicating what they will and won't cover, but I do think that they're going to have to catch up. I think that as the world progresses and as the industry and the ground floor gyms actually dictate what is happening, BG will catch up. That's my own personal prediction based off of what has happened over here with both our insurance companies and USAG, okay? They're gonna have to come up with policies that reflect really what's going on on the ground floor. Number two though, aside from that, okay, something that works well over here is specialty classes. So, we know conditioning is played out. We know the kids are tired of flexibility. Um, but I know that a lot of gyms have started to incorporate themes. Um, they've had the rec kids partake in a ninja class, something that they wouldn't normally do. Um, so they've mixed it up and kind of hidden the work, if you will, with themes and different specialties and niches. So that has come from a lot of collaboration. Um, a lot of, you know, making friends with other gym owners and figuring out what works and getting ideas from other gyms. But if you can niche down and, and do some specialty fun classes, I don't think it's going to be long that we're going to have to continue this, but that's something worth trying to hold their interest to. Okay. But you still are going to need it for your backup plans, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, from Gareth here, foggers can be ordered online, e.g. eBay, as I have for us to ensure ongoing cleaning. Our system was £300 plus cleaning solution. Okay, good. Um, Lindsay says, uh, yeah, you can do badges eight through to four, but still very basic. Yeah, there's a list on the BG website for the badges. Um, okay, so from uh, Bev um, Proctor, have you come across any classes where preschoolers are returning? Um, they are not so good at socially distancing. Yes, we know that. Um, so mommy and me are, are working out parent and me is because the parent's actually there to help control the situation. Um, and then also if toddler classes and kinder gym wasn't already small, most gyms are starting with even smaller kinder gym classes. So if your preschool class used to be eight or six, now it's three or four um, and they're starting there. Yeah, okay. but those those dots, I'm telling you, give them something to carry around. <laughs> it helps. Okay, so uh, excuse my ignorance on this because I have an 18 year old rather than an eight year old. With the homeschooling, um, is it that the homeschooling that the kids are having structured timetables as they would do in school, or can they spread their learning out across the the whole day? And if it's the latter, is there an opportunity then to increase the timetable capacity at the gym? to allow more classes, well, more smaller classes. Is that something uh, that you guys have you got some to, comment on? Well, I know that our homeschool families, they, they have their own schedule, so they'll spread it across the whole day. Some people stop at one o'clock, some people just do chunks here and there, so they have flexibility in their scheduling. 
So yeah. I, I definitely think that's an opportunity to serve homeschool families, whether you're open or closed. I can see ways to do that both ways. Okay. All right. Um, that's a that's a huge market for us. Okay. So uh, just so you guys know, we've got a hard stop at five o'clock. So I'm just going to get through some of these other comments that are coming in thick and fast here. Um, okay. So BG have also released some fundamentals, jump to gymnastics and gym fit content suitable. Uh, for doing at home, all available on the website. Yep, I saw that last week. In actual fact, we've got an email already queued up to go out um, that, uh, that talks about that. So you'll be seeing that coming through soon. Uh, from Karen Cheeseman, uh, we've also videoed ourselves doing some fun, to, uh, fun skills like preschool assault courses with teddies and cushions, etc. A little harder with teenagers though. So yeah, that's about creating that value with your own content. Um, uh, David, I know, I know you've touched upon carpet floor. Are clubs using their sprung floors? How might you clean a sprung floor between uh, use or classes? Typically, I've seen them either have uh, EVA, like two inch EVA foam with carpet laid on top, or they'll just have carpet bonded foams. I think that's pretty standard globally. Both of those can be cleaned with either the fogger or with a, um, why can't I think of this word? A carpet shampooer with the the cleaning solution in it so i always right or wrong treated my carpet bonded foam the same as my my carpet rolls laid on top of eva and i never had a problem so okay, okay. good uh from stephen maloney scottish gymnastics have also adapted their skills one to five for the home and offered it free of charge great uh, Katrina, what about the financial implications of returning to classes? If you need more staff or have less members, it could affect the ability to run classes. You know, something, I know that's something that you're quite hot on, Kim. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely can. I would recommend that you somewhere get yourself access to a very easy spreadsheet so you can run your own numbers because you're right. Um, there's a huge possibility that we're going to need to pay staff more than we're actually taking in from having these kids um, join in at a lower ratio. That's probably going to happen, but you can either treat it one of two ways, right? You can um, not open at all and wait until you have a full green light to have everybody back in. You know, you have to, it's the risk reward ratio, right? You have to think about what do you lose by operating that way? Well, you haven't had the time to test out your new protocols and um, all of the, <clears throat> the changes that you're gonna have to make. And they may or may not work well, right? So is it easier to adjust those and get a really nice flow going with half the kids? Or can you handle that when you have full capacity of return? Um, it might be a little more chaotic. So is, is that, get is your- that perhaps, Is that perhaps a question for, the, uh, for your parent survey that um, would they be willing to pay a little bit more um, in recognition that the classes are smaller and we've got to put on more staff. You could, you could do, you could ask them that. Yeah. You, you could. Um, but I would definitely recommend making a spreadsheet. I have one. If you want to contact me, um, I have one that's already made. But whatever way it takes for you to figure this out, you do have to know what your minimum numbers are. You have to know your numbers behind the scene. Um, whether or not you continue to run those classes, even though you know you're losing money because it's just something you have to pass through to get to full go or you just wait, that's up to you. But, you know, there is a possibility, but you do need to know your minimum numbers. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, from Kirsty Chapman, uh, we have extremely big classes with lots of coaches. Any ideas how we could uh, be able to condense those classes without upset anyone uh, and also keeping distance from each other? Yeah, well, I think we don't know how many of those kids are going to return, right? So hopefully you'll have some time built in from registration to actual first day of class. So you'll have some time built in to look at this and have actual numbers to figure this out for yourself. I don't know what your square footage is and I don't know what your floor plan looks like. So it's hard for me to just say off the bat, but there are, you know, I think everyone's expecting to take a hit in class ratios. I think we're prob there's not really any way to get around that unless um, you only choose to have one class in at a time, but still have full staff and then break up into smaller groups. Um, it's going to be extra important to have your floor marked 
So every child has a place to stand when you're actually coming together as a full big class before you split up. It's just gonna take organization, right? So number one, get your numbers together, know how many people you're even looking at that are coming back on day one. Um, and then as far as upsetting anyone, I, you know, I think everybody understands that we have new rules to work within. So that's gonna be up to you to organize your new class ratios um, and, and communicate that and then also come up with an organized plan for reopening. But you have to, you have to make those social distancing rules super clear to your coaches and the kids multiple times. Okay, good. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, how would you suggest keeping uh, the cleaning up if you hire a space and you don't have a set facility? So for example, they might be in a leisure center. Um, that hall could be used by multiple clubs and school pupils. Yeah, well, I think we have to know what the cleaning plan is for the leisure center anyway, so we know what we're working with. And then you can fill in the gaps. So if we know that they're not doing something that we want done, then we have to build in time to make sure that extra cleaning step is taken. Uh, but then also we need to make sure that whatever cleaning precautions we want to take, um, we can carry carry out. So that, that's why I'm suggesting a 15 minute buffer. If you can handle 15 minutes, maybe it's 10 minutes, whatever it's gonna be, you have to run like a well-oiled machine with your coaches and your staff to make sure everything is getting wiped down to your standards that you are comfortable with and that your parents are comfortable with. It's gonna be about organization and communication, whatever your plans are gonna be, organization, communication, and that's what's gonna keep the parent trust and keep everyone safe. Okay, good. I think there's only a couple more. Um, if, you have ex if you have extremely large classes, would you roll out a two week pattern of return classes? Yeah, I would make that an option. I think you have to have a couple options, right? So you don't know what mandates you're gonna be handed. You don't know what you have to work with right now. So I would definitely sit down if you have extremely large classes and figure out how to do a soft return, maybe this is a this is a good chance to look at your spectrum of what your opening might be. Um, what if you roll out a two week pattern? What if you roll out a three week pattern? What does that look like? Um, what if you start with uh, toddler classes but not school age? What if you start with team but not classes? You know, look at different ways you can slice and dice it and what that does to your staffing costs and the traffic flow and safety. Good. Okay, uh, Farah, our um, marketing and comms uh, extraordinaire has posted the link for next week's webinar on there. That's HR and staffing. So uh, if you go into the chat, you'll see the, uh, the link and you'll see all the topics that we're gonna be covering under that one. Uh, anybody, uh, we've got uh, five minutes left. Anybody got any questions they wanna fire at Kim or, uh, or myself? Hopefully at Kim. This was great. This was really great. If, if anybody has questions for me, I do have a um, Love Gymnastics. It's just Kim at lovegymnastics.com. And I'm happy to pass on the survey questions and um, any templates that we can make for them with the graphics. Oh, so, yeah. We'll make sure you get what you need. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thanks, guys. That was, uh, uh, that was excellent, Kim. Thanks for the content. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Okay. All right. See you next Wednesday. Bye-bye. So Thanks. Bye.